This video isn't like any of the others I've made so far where I've talked about some aspect of Hyperionism. This is more of a personal video about the spiritual and philosophical journey that uh, that led me to it. I'm really terrible at journaling, so uh, this is this is my way of chronicling the different paths I went down and, and uh, my thought processes along the way. And it's also a way for people who ask me about Hyperionism to get a better understanding of how and why I ended up here. There's just a few things about my background that I should probably include. Uh, my parents are both physicists, um, and although they had been raised in in some form of Christianity, once they became adults, they they just ceased to have any connection to religion at all. Um, they, they never once took us to church or talked about any kind of uh, religious or spiritual aspect of existence. We did celebrate Christmas because, um, you know, they had, of course, grown up with the tradition, but it was probably, probably the kind of um, celebration that Christians really despise, Santa Claus, presents, food, visiting relatives, all of those sorts of things. When I was very young and became aware that people uh, went to church or at least belonged to a church, I was curious and, and um, a little disturbed. I didn't understand why we didn't have this thing, this aspect in our lives too, and I didn't like being different, well, at least not then. On the plus side, my parents never tried to influence my beliefs in any way. I must have asked questions because I, I was and still am an incessant uh, question asker, but I don't have any memory of being told there was no God, and uh, they never kept me from going to church service with friends if, if I was invited, and I did go to church um, several times, well, different kind of services, uh, Presbyterian, Catholic, Unitarian, and uh, even a, um, someone I knew was a Mormon and invited me to a, a Mormon study group a few times. Nothing about it seemed really interesting, though. I just wanted to be with my friends. And, uh, you know, if they were going and invited me, it, it was just something I, I, you know, went off to do like any kind of play date. I didn't realize until many years later what a gift it was that I had been allowed to develop without any conditioning, um, or, you know, with as little as possible, given that Christianity, you know, is everywhere. Um, you know, even if it wasn't in, in my home, I, I, but I, I didn't know when I was young that I would be grateful, uh, that I wouldn't have to remove any religious brainwashing later. But now I think it was one of the best things my parents ever did for me. I don't really remember when I started wondering about life, the universe and everything, but I think I was fairly young when I sensed that there was more to existence than just being born, living, dying, and then some, you know, nothingness. I wasn't being told that there that that's all there was, uh, but I, I might have figured it was because I wasn't being given any definite answers, you know, to the contrary either. And I really, really like definite answers. So I sensed that there was something, I just didn't know what it was. And I had no outside influence, so I ended up searching out answers on my own. Although at the time, I had no idea that's what I was doing. I, I would just come across things of a religious or spiritual nature, and if you know, if they sounded interesting, I'd look into them. The sort of tragic thing is that I never looked into philosophy. Um, you know, that, that word just, uh, you know, made me think that of a dead subject with dusty books and, you know, people debating how many angels you could fit on the head of a pin. I, I had no concept, uh, you know, of what, of what the philosophy was really about, um, that it's actually where I, I would have found out so much of what I wanted to know. It's really unfortunate that it took me so long to discover it, and I, I urge people not to make that mistake and start early. When I was in my teens and early 20s, I, I spent some time reading occult books. You know, I mean, it was the thing to do at the time. It was very, it was, it was very superficial study, and I, I didn't understand much of what it was about. This was before the internet, by the way, so it was very difficult to get a lot of help to clarify things. But from what I could gather, magic was about gaining the knowledge to do something, to produce some kind of effect. And although I think the subject is fascinating, it somehow wasn't a good fit for me, at least at that time. I read A Course in Miracles at some point, and I joined an Edgar Casey study group for a while, and and then I um, I decided to read the Bible because even though I knew it didn't make sense just from what I had encountered in the world, I, I wanted to know exactly what it was I was dismissing. And reading it confirmed that there there's no way to defend what's in there in any rational sense. Uh, in fact, I've, I've actually read it twice. I read it again many years later. 
well, I skimmed through the sections that, that just droned on about measurements and, and the other really boring shit, but I found it really stressful. I, I've always found it stressful to read the Bible. Um, I get, I get very agitated by the contradictions and the nonsense, and I end up sort of just desperately wanting an intelligent, uh, devout Christian to explain to me how they can make sense of it in some kind of rational way. I mean, how can they believe this? How can they believe that God is good and all-knowing and all-powerful? Um, and I've been told over and over again by people who were raised in really strict Christian families that what I want is impossible because I want logic and Christians have faith and they won't, they won't give a logical argument. I used to in, uh, engage often with Christians and, you know, on, on like social media in the hopes of getting some of the answers I want, but it, it never happens. It's just a waste of time, you know, for everybody. Um, when I was in university choosing elective courses, I, I decided to take a, a couple on Hinduism and Buddhism, which I, I really enjoyed. Um, Hinduism is a very complex religion. What I liked about it was that there are so many ways to practice it. It's uh, very different from Christianity, which is pretty much a one-size-fits-all. And uh, uh, another thing that grabbed me um, you know, was that there was something further back. Um, there's like a one step removed from the anthropomorphic gods and something like pure consciousness. And I really liked that idea. Uh, I think that's probably when I realized that, I, uh, that what I wanted to know was, um, was much more basic and more fundamental than what I had encountered before. And the only model I really had was Christianity at that point. And one of the aspects that had bothered me um, in, in uh, Christianity was the answer to everything all, always comes back to God. It was like you hit a wall in uncovering the explanation for everything beyond which you can't go. I wanted to know what God was made of, you know, where he came from. And I saw that everyone who believed seemed fine with this. They didn't have any problem stopping at the God wall. You know, it was enough for them, but it was never satisfying for me. Uh, so Hindu Hinduism showed me that, that you can get further back. And years later, I studied Ayurveda, which is the ancient uh, Vedic medical system. And again, it, it was the cosmology. That, that aspect of it was what really interested me. Um, it's much more complex than the simplistic biblical creation story. When I was in uh, school, I also took the semester on Buddhism. And, and that has such a different vibe uh, from Hinduism, even though it grew out of it. Hinduism is this like explosion of different gods and ways of practicing and living. Um, you, you know, you can have two different people in one house who practice completely different things, and, and yet it's all Hinduism. And then Buddhism was this really straightforward philosophy and path. It was like, here's the problem, and this is what you do about it. Uh, all life is suffering. Follow this path, and, and you can end your suffering. It was so different. And the simplicity of it appealed to my logical brain, but I didn't sense that it was the, the whole picture. Uh, it didn't have the explanation I was looking for. I didn't know that it was right. And I liked, uh, I liked the more peaceful attitude it had. Um, I liked the tolerance. Uh, for a long time, I lived with what I called just my set of spiritual beliefs. Nothing I had encountered made me want to commit to it. I liked the trappings of lots of things, but I knew it would be false to commit to something I didn't really believe in. And, and that was, uh, you know, difficult in a way because I wanted to be part of something. I felt like I was wandering around looking for this big, you know, it in capital letters. I, I wasn't unhappy, uh, though. And, and by this time, I was way past being disturbed that I wasn't following the majority of what people were doing um, or sharing whatever non-belief my parents and sister had. So I carried on with that coexist and many paths to the top of the mountain philosophy. And and that's not bad, um, but I still wanted to know more. I wanted to know more of what reality actually is. And I kept hearing things like, you know, it's unknowable and it's arrogant to think that you can know the absolute, that you can know the unknowable. But I wanted to know why is it unknowable? And I didn't feel arrogant for wanting to know. I mean, I, I didn't feel arrogant for thinking it was possible to know. Um, I knew that I could formulate the question, you know, and if I could conceive of the question, can I know the answer? It was really frustrating, uh, actually. And the coexist philosophy, while it's really, um, you know, has this very nice feel to it, it does have a downside, uh, which kicks in when you, you finally realize that only some people are willing to share the playground with you. And at the same time, there's a whole lot of others who are really trying to just boot you out of the whole park. And then I stumbled onto ontological mathematics, and it was like nothing I had ever seen before. 
uh, actually it was at this time that I had been uh, following Morg on Facebook and I realized that he was talking about the same material and it was actually through Morg that I realized what philosophy is really about. And that opened up an enormous area of interest and study. I don't understand why people don't want to discuss philosophy all the time, honestly. I just, I don't get it. Uh, anyway, so ontological mathematics was this holy shit moment. Um, it removed that wall that you hit with every other system out there. This is something, you know, that, that addressed the fundamental nature of reality itself. And that was mathematical. Uh, it's so cool. I, I remember how, how everyone always said that the universal language is love. And I was always thinking to myself, no, the universal language is math. It's so obvious. This material was like finding the most incredible treasure. I mean, it was the it with, you know, in capital letters that I had been looking for. I realized I had never adopted a belief system um, prior to that because I, I didn't want to believe. I wanted to know. And this was something huge, life-changing, world-changing. Understanding this truth will lead people to changing the world. It's just a matter of time.